All right, the first part to our motor build is building what we call the rotor or armature. You could call it that because it's the actual part that rotates. So you'll only need two things to do this, the main one being the copper wire. Hopefully you have one that you haven't used yet so it's not kinked. And then you'll need the D cell battery. We do want the D cell, not the double A's. We want this thickness. So first thing you're gonna do is unravel your wire. So try to get it as straight as possible. Take your time in this so you don't have any kinks. And then I will kind of preface this with this is maybe the trickiest part of the build. So have patience right now. But you're gonna wrap this around the battery to create a solenoid. Now, remember just a solenoid's a looping wire. The catch is though, it's gonna try to unravel right away. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to, with the ends leaving about two, maybe two and a half inches, we're gonna use those as kind of the part that ties off the loop on each side. So leave yourself about two and a half inches and then just start wrapping this around as tight as possible. Notice it's okay if I overlap, all right, but if it does space out, get it scrunched up together. And then when I finish with the other end of the wire, I also need to have about two and a half inches. So you'll notice each side I've left enough length and I'm trying to keep it all pinched with my fingers so it doesn't unravel. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to slide this off again without it unraveling. So let's see if I can get this okay. All right, so sliding it off right here. And if I do let go, it definitely will unravel. So you'll notice with one end, I'm going to take this and actually wrap it around the looping wire. Sorry for the sirens in the back, guys. Okay, so if I loop this around and then through, it can kind of tie itself off. So not really doing a knot, just maybe do that twice. And then if it's tight enough, you can see that it's at least going to hold this part of the solenoid in place. We do need to have a significant amount left on the end here. So I would say at minimum an inch, which is about where I'm at. I'm at. If you can get more than an inch, that's probably better. I'm going to then do the same thing to the other side, but it's got to actually be at the exact same spot opposite. So the big thing with this is symmetry. You actually want to imagine these two lines that you're tying off these two ends to be a line that goes perfectly through the middle. If it's uneven to one side, it'll be lopsided. The axis of rotation, because that's what this is going to spin on, it's like an axis, it'll be off center and it won't rotate evenly. It, it might not work, okay? So you'll notice I can adjust this and then try to eyeball, okay, right through the middle, straight across, looks like it's about right there maybe. I can adjust this after I tie it off, but again, I want to be mindful that I have enough string, or copper wire, I should say, to actually have it tied off exactly halfway across. So once I do get that side then knotted off, I'm again just trying to find out, is that splitting the center nice and even? Is everything tight? Are these wires at the end real straight? Even going the other way too, they can't kind of bend the other way. You need it to be perfectly flat. So maybe even use kind of the table to flatten things out. Um, but this is the most important part. You just want this to be through the center, which you can see mine is not, so I've got to do some adjusting. All right. And then you also want it to be as flat as possible in all directions. Okay. Take your time with this. This is the big part. If it doesn't look as clean as it could be, maybe unravel it and start over again. All right, you'll, you'll be thankful that you took the time on this, okay? Good luck with that part. Yeah.